approach this topic, this assignment from the back end and work our way forward. Um, the assignment is how do we empower people to finance the vision. I want to say a little bit today uh, about the vision and the visionary. And then tomorrow we're going to talk a little bit more about the economics for the vision, um, how to empower the people to finance the vision. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 <clears throat> Corinthians chapter 4. I, I won't finish it. I won't end it today. I want to just lay some foundation and we'll get into the meat of the matter on tomorrow. But the assignment is... topic talks about economic empowerment and it talks about the vision. I want to talk in the back end about the vision and the visionary and our relationship to empowerment. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. <clears throat> Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ, so says King James, and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Verse 9. For I think that God hath set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world and unto angels and unto men. We are made, Paul says, a spectacle. The key to this verse is in the word spectacle. It is in fact the word Theatron, from which we get our English word theater. Listen to what Paul says. Paul says, God has made us a spectacle before the whole world. Men and women of God, pastors, leaders, God says, God has made us a spectacle in front of the whole world. There is a new and fresh uh, paraphrase of scripture that I would highly recommend to you. Um, a gentleman by the name of Peterson and it's called The Message. Uh, highly recommended. Fresh paraphrase. And Listen to how Peterson translates that verse uh, in colloquial language to which we can relate. He says, it seems to me that God has put us who bear his message on stage in a theater. On stage in a theater in which no one wants to buy a ticket. He says, we're something that everyone stands around and stares at like an accident in the street. Paul says, God has made us a spectacle. He's, Peterson says, he's put us on a stage in a theater. And the world is not buying tickets to our performance. And yet God leaves us on display. For we are part of a divine drama. One in which the producer is God. The director is the Holy Ghost. The star of the show is Jesus the Christ. The featured performers are you and me as members of God's cast. The script 
is the word of God. The plot is redemption and the set is the world. And God says he has set us on a stage before the whole world. Let's back this train up and then Paul tells us that there are several roles that we are to play. He says in verse 1 that men ought to account of us as ministers listen now and stewards of Christ. Paul says that we play at least two roles as we are on the stage before the world. He says that those who observe our lives ought to so account. It is an accounting term that means to draw a conclusion by observation and by calculation. They ought to be able to look at our lives and draw a conclusion by observation. Paul says they ought to see us on the stage of life and draw the conclusion, watch this now, that we are two things. He says that we are, old King James says, ministers. And then it says that we are stewards. Two words that are in fact synonyms for slaves. Paul says that they ought to observe our lives and draw the conclusion that we are servants. Slaves. Uh -huh. Paul says, first of all, that we are ministers. Now, this is not Paul's most common term for servant, which is diakonos, from which we get our word deacon. This is a rather unusual and unique term or word for servant or slave. He says they ought to conclude that we are servants, servants, servants. This word is an interesting word that really is taken from a nautical culture. It's a nautical term and it speaks of servants, servants or slaves who function in a particular role. The root word of this word is the word that means to row, R-O-W, to row. The prefix who pair means under or underneath. And so it speaks of a slave who functions in the assignment of being an under rower. Stay with me, I'm, I'm going somewhere. He says, this is a slave or a servant who serves as a slave in the belly of a ship. And the assignment of this particular slave or servant is to be the rower. And it is the rower that propels the ship through the waters. Paul says they ought to be able to look at us and see that we are nothing more than rowers rowing under the deck in a ship. But we are servants and we are slaves of God and they ought to be able to conclude that just by observing our lives. When Paul says that we are to be seen as servants, as ministers who are under rowers, it suggests to us that we at least are those who do two things. First of all, the servant and rower does not determine the direction of the ship. Y'all ain't got it. Let me try this folk over here. The slave that's rowing in the belly of the ship is not the one who determines the direction of the ship. He does not determine whether it goes left or right. Does not determine the speed.